I am doing. Oh, you look so much better this week. I feel so much better this week. I was I, I watched the YouTube from last week and I was like, man, I did not realize how shnight I looked and sounded. Um, I'm feeling much, much better. I no longer like- have cold drains hanging off me, which is great. Um, getting the anemia sorted, which is also great. So I'm feeling much, much, much better. Good. I start physical therapy tomorrow, so maybe I'll be able to lift my arms past here. Like, I feel like I can, but they told me not to until I do physical therapy. So, you know, I have to get permission before I can lift my arms past here. Well, it was good to have you back. I'm glad we got the yeah. the, the rupture Nine. done with. I am officially through the rush. Nine. All done. I got to do the immunotherapy, um, but I'm feeling much more like myself, feeling much better, through the really hard stuff. Uh, I, I, I thought about putting one of my wigs on today because, like, I have, like, I have, like, this little fuzz, right? <laughs> ah, the Sinead but O'Connor. Here... Yeah, but here's the weird <laughs> Schneider. Like, it's not coming in quite even. So I have a little, like, bald spot here, which I don't love. Oh, it... Otherwise, I would just... Otherwise, I would just be rocking this. Like, if it was a little more even, you know? But also, like, it's coming in kind of, like, calico. Like you got like white spots and black spots and yes like I have plenty of red and I have some white patches which I knew about because you know I I had white streaks here long before my hair fell out but I have some patches that are like dark for you and I'm like what the fuck is that and I've heard that can happen. People say, like, your hair will come in a different color and then eventually probably go back to your natural color. But I'm like, right, but it's three colors. <laughs> I'm like, what? Calico Cat. Tara, it likes options. Each week. Catherine, pretty good at our audience. Go out the worldwide interwebs. Find all sorts of horrible things. Bring it back here for a little segment we like to call what the fuck is wrong? I, you know, it. I, I didn't realize until I was like older that commercial airlines, passenger airlines, also carry cargo for like other. Like they carry, they carry like other stuff, not just people's. Really? Yeah. Um. They can carry other things, and that's neat. And I didn't find out so much later in life. Um. But I don't think the luggage carriers were expecting this particular car. Escaped bear delays flights in Dubai. Yep. A, a bear being transported to an Iraq uh, on an Iraqi Airways flight from Baghdad to Dubai. Uh, Friday caused delays after it escaped from a crate in the cargo hold. Rocky Airways issued. Oh. Yeah, issued an apology after a video circulated online of the mail passenger saying the return flight to Baghdad was delayed for over an hour due to a bear in the cargo. Another video of bear cup can be seen roaming outside its crate on the plane while people pet and attempt to comfort it. Bear was sedated. Specialist team in uh, Dubai was taken off the plane. How? The, the animal escaped its crate specified for shipment. Plane crew coordinated with uh, UAE's authority and sent a specialized team to sedate the animal and take off the plane. Airline did not reveal why the bear was being transported to the United Arab Emirates or provide any information on its well-being after it was sedated and taken off the plane. I guess it's going to a zoo. That's that's and they sent it on, and they fl- they flew it commercial. Yep. So, you're you're on a flight. Unbeknownst to you, in the cargo hold, there's a bear. It's a cub. It's Samuel L. Jackson when you need him. I I would I I'm not sure how freaked I would be a little freaked out by this. Like, oh, is that a puppy? No, that's not a puppy. 
That is not a fucking puppy. I I know myself. I'd be one of the people trying to comfort the bear. Yeah, but it's 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 not a puppy. It is not a puppy. It's so cute, baby bear. It's okay. It is it, it's it is death. Egg furry. Angry death. But not yet. Eventually. It's just little baby it's just little baby death. I just I don't even know how the crew was was get, like, okay, do we pass out the drinks or what? The fuck do we Right. Like what do we what do we do? Because the situation. The crew, they're not just like I, I know everybody's like, oh, just waitress in the sky. No, no, no. They 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 are trained for a whole lot of they will save your fucking life if the shit goes down. I just don't the think the serving drinks thing is their secondary job. I just don't think that's they were... like what they do in their downtime from their real job. I just don't think they were prepared for, you know, bear. I don't think that was yeah. covered in the emergency Kai. And suddenly bear. Yep. Like, it, it, honestly, it probably is. Do we have some it kind of fucking is. Really? You think bears are covered in the uh in the air in the flight attendant manual? I wouldn't put anything past them at this point. Shit. If you've been a flight attendant long enough, you've probably seen some shit. I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they had to at least tell them. They can't just Jurassic Park that motherfucker and put it on there and be like, no one's going to notice. Well, apparently they did. It, it makes you wonder what other shit has gone on, been flown on the plane y'all never knew the fuck about. Now I now I understand why they have to weigh your bags so carefully. <laughs> why it's like my bag is like fifty one pounds. It's a fucking thing. Although here's the part that's always weird to me. Like if my bag is fifty one pounds, I have to take something out of my bag and put it in my carry on bag, which is still the same weight. And I'm like. So that pound is still going on the plate. <laughs> Just like 20 feet higher. So I don't, I don't understand what difference it makes. And it's probably just like a, if we let that slide, it's a domino effect type of thing. But like that happened to me last time I flew. Like I had to pull a sweater out of my bag and shove it into my little carry on backpack. And I'm like, does it matter? Is this one pound? Is in this bag or this bag? They're both going on the plane. But maybe it would piss off the bear. I had not considered the bear. We have more flight shenanigans this, this week. Um, how, how, does, how does this keep fucking happening? I don't... Not only how does it keep happening... How, maybe this has been going on for ages. Nobody, nobody's been talking about it. Lufthansa pilot. Oh, it's because of. All right, that makes sense. Someone said it because of the staff who has to lift the. Bag. Oh, that's fair enough. Fair enough. But, all right. Lufthansa cool. pilot traced a 15 mile long penis shape in the sky after being asked to divert his plane. Well, we're from in circles. A handsome pilot made a 15 long penis shaped loop in the sky. Uh, the pilot was flying from Frankfurt to Sicily on July 28th, but was asked mid flight to land in Malta instead. I was said to be a disruption in the flight's original destination. to have been struggling after a fire damaged the main terminal on July 16th. Flight radar showed that after receiving the diversionary request, the handsome crew uh, flew over and passed uh, Cantina before spending about 16 minutes creating a distinctly phallic loop over the sea off the eastern coast of Sicily. Played them retrace its route back. Uh this is the art this is this is the this is the paragraph that killed me. It remains unclear whether the pilot intentionally designed the shape. Does it does it really is that unclear? Like, is, is that, that's, cause I'm looking at it and it looks pretty fucking clear. That's a dick. 
That's that's a penis. I don't know. Maybe they, maybe they annoyed the pilot. He's like, okay, fuck y'all, because they see this shit on on the tracking shit on yeah. the top. They see this. Like it's like admittedly, it's been a little over a year since I've had a look at one up close. But if memory serves, I'm pretty confident about it. Oh, crew, be advised. Uh, we are making a phallic maneuver. That is a phallic maneuver. Please, uh, please take all necessary precautions. Put tray tables back up and thank you for flying with us. <laughs> oh. And the best part is like when you're on a plane, and this always fucks me up. Like, one, like it feels like you're going so slow and you're actually going incredibly fast. Faster than you've ever yeah. got in your life. Yeah. Yeah. But also, like, you can't tell if they turn. No. That always fucks me up, too. Like, they could make a hard left turn, and you don't know, because they're doing it on such a large scale. But when they start going down, you can feel that. Sometimes they do the plane yeah. enough that the whole plane goes like, oh, and I'm like, yeah, that I don't like. I'm like, oh, man, that- I'm right. At the, I, there, the ground is that way, and I'm right here. Oh, hello, Griff. I don't like it when they do that. Oh, the next one. This is one of those retail things that uh, I almost have to give him credit for how simple this scam was. I, it's it's baffling. Just yeah, this worked. Um, man cheated Home Depot out of three hundred thousand dollars with door return scam providence rhode island connecticut man was given nearly three hundred thousand dollars in fraudulent home depot credit by walking into stores in several states taking expensive doors and then returning them without a receipt alexander henrique costa mota 26 west hartford connecticut was detained without bail after a judge entertained a not guilty plea uh, Costamoto dressed to appear like a contract that entered the store empty handed He would then load a door or several doors worth $100 each on a lumber cart, then take them to the service department and return them without a receipt. That's slick. Yeah. When I worked at Old Navy, people used to do this with baby clothes. If they were easy to stash... Or, like, we'd ask people just, like, grab a thing from the back of the store, toss the hanger, walk it up to the register, and return it. And and this... This this is more common than you think, but not on this scale. This is why most stores don't let you do it without a receipt. Except Walmart will let you fucking return anything for some people. Um, But, yeah, you, you have to have a receipt to return shit. But Home Depot, the idea is contractors, they get a little leeway. They have their own section of the store to come in, and they have a loading area. And they're like, these are their biggest customers in bulk and whatnot. So the guy says, he's a contractor. Look at him. He's a contractor. This guy says he's returns the doors. He returns the doors. Just trust him. Um, Even better, uh, part of how they caught him, we require a valid driver's license or government-issued photo identification for non-receipt return. In this case, the defendant apparently used his own driver's license once, then used several fraudulent licenses with other names to conduct the other returns. So he had his own name on the shit at one point. This did by that much. I mean, smart to keep changing it, but you shouldn't have used your real one the first time. I am just three hundred thousand dollars in door. The same scam over and over is the that, that's the part that's like, holy shit! Here's the thing though, like, what are you spending three hundred thousand dollars on at Home Depot? You're building your own house. I guess, yeah. You build a whole house with three hundred thousand dollars worth of shit from Home Depot. You could build the whole fucking house. Wiring and insulation and windows and all the whole bit. Fucking roof, all that. I, I mean, 
It's kind of like kind of fucking clever. It's it's like the weirdest iteration on Johnny Cash's One Piece at a Time ever. It's it's <laughs> yeah. I mean, th this is th this is not how you flip a house, by the way. But um, doors are hundred to a thousand at Home Depot. Yeah, it's certain door. It's it's wild how fucking expensive the doors. Listen, I used to work for Ethan Allen Corporate, and we sold throw pillows that were six hundred dollars. Throw pillows that were six hundred dollars. Yeah, produce fucking pillows. Were they filled with cocaine? Not that I know of. They were just like hand beaded and shit, like. You can waste a lot of money on shit for a house if you want to. I appreciate, you know, the hustle here. I do. I really do. Because, you know, yeah. that's like all that shit. But come on, man. Don't ever get What were you thinking? Yeah, yeah. Because clearly you're able to get fake IDs. So you got to start out that way. All right. Going to move along to... uh. Yeah, here we go. Oh, boy. Um, it's more crime. This one, it, I think I know what happened here, and it's very stupid. The article doesn't say it, but I think I know what happened, and it's... Call it a hunch. One cat ear that's floppy, and it's... It's a meal. Naked man breaks into Mesa Farm Shop. Uh, Steadfast Farm near the Phoenix Mesa Gateway Airport has a small storefront where they sell coffee and some items from their farm. Last Friday, they had their first break in. Uh, Schultz posted a security video to the farm's social media pages. You could see a man wearing nothing but a beanie on his head. They had to stress it was on his head. Uh, trying to get into the shop's front door. Police responded early uh, last Friday morning around 3.15. In the video, the man even kicked the door, failed to get in, went around the back, and broke through the side door. Ran through the door and probably hurt himself in the process, Schultz says. The entire building shook when he went through that, so already we're at, oh yeah! Schultz says he's never seen the man before, but he didn't steal anything from inside. Side door is broken, cost about $2,000. Did he at least yell, I'm the juggernaut bitch? <laughs> Is this not that what are we here for? No, but I know what happened. I bet you, I fucking bet you anything. I bet you this guy was under the mistaken impression that this shit was a dispenser. I bet you anything he saw the farm sign on, he thought pot dispenser. I bet you anything that's what he thought this fucking baby. But why would he be naked? Because he high as shit. Like, I know it's been a while since the Red Hot Chili Peppers put out an album, but if we doing that bad? Actually, play was on Star Wars. That melted my head. Really? He was in Kenobi. He's one of the bad guys. I watched that show. Yeah. He was the guy who kidnapped Leah. That was Flea. That was fucking Flea. Wow. Give it away. Give it away. Come on with those fucking Flea. And now there's probably a little version of him you could put into an X-Wing. <laughs> How probably fucking... a little Lego wing. How fucking... It's just... It's Flea. It's, it's fucking Red Hot. The guy who went out on stage with his dick in a sock. Now he's, he's a Lego. Life has twists and turns, my friend. Anyway, I'm 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 convinced that yeah he was under the mistaken impression that this was a. If you look at the inside of the store, legal dis do they have dispensaries in Arizona? I don't think they do. I think he yeah, was just I really. It was a legal state. No, it's not. I think he was just really fucking. That's my opinion. You know, that's my my take on it. Because otherwise, he broke in and there's nothing to steal. He's just like, oh man. It's just like jam and stuff. 
Damn it. Oh, man. That ain't even any CBD jam? Oh, man. Well, it wouldn't be us if we didn't have some Florida. We have some Florida. Because this... There's a certain type of dude I don't get. A certain type of dude who thinks that you could obstinately and aggressively and physically work, go through any problem you encounter. Like the guy in the last story. And there are some problems in life that, you know, physical obstinance, aggressiveness may help. This is definitely, I, I don't, what was your outcome here, bro? I'm going to blow this shit up, man accused of saying after missing flight, Fort Lauderdale, and showed up late to his American Airlines flight. Hmm? Ew. Yeah, dude. Man who showed up late to his American Airlines flight at the Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport Monday expressed his displeasure by making a bomb threat. Already say, uh, Vincent uh, Serino, 30, Lewiston, showed up to the gate, was told about that was flight was closed, and then, enraged, said to the gate agent, I'm going to blow this shit up. I'm going to take you all out. Probably heard it call 911. When I attempted to advise Serino of his Miranda rights, he refused to allow it. What, what do you even say? Like, no, 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 thank you. I decline to be arrested at this time. How, how, what? There are people who think that if they don't, that if they're not able to read you the full little paragraph, that that means they can't arrest you. There are people that think that. It's not a magic spell. Right. But like, if they're if they're not able to get out all the magic words, they can't take you. And that is not true. They can just wait. Like they do have to advise you of your rights at some point, but they can just wait until they have you fucking cuffed and you can't do anything about it. I wish the Goblin King would come and take you away right now. How hard is that? Yeah, like it's not it's not actual <laughs> magic. <laughs> No. Uh, Deputy Christopher Anderson wrote an arrest report. Once again, he became enraged and was swearing at me and raising his voice. Appeared in court Tuesday on charges of making yeah, like, a bomb threat. You can't lie. I can't hear you out of an arrest. You can't do that. You are not going to make the police back down. Have you been to America? Their entire personality is escalating to an unreasonable point. That is that is what them do. That's kind of their brand these days. You are not going to out-shout, out-aggressive, out-bullshit a cop. No. Because there are many more of them than you, and they are all aggressive and bullshitting. And they, they do it professionally. They get paid for it. You don't. You are in for it. You are an amateur. You are an amateur, obstinate motherfucker. Yeah. This is not sad. Um, and then we get the tanks. <laughs> get the fucking tanks. Oh, Phoenix, Sarah, uh, one of the people from Arizona says they do have legal recreational weed. My theory, my theory is, see? I did not know that about Arizona. I'm smarter than I am. <laughs> I was unaware it was that Uh Well, she, Serino's attorney said Serino, a truck driver, was on his way to go pick up his truck from a repair shop when he missed his flight. Okay, and? A lot of people have to do a lot of things. Yeah, that's that's that sounds like a you problem, bro. Right. Shit happens. You go up and you'd be like, oh, man, please, can you fucking help me, man? Because this shit. You tell them your sorrows. You you treat them like a human person. You say, this is bad. These bad things happen. And they are true. And normally they'll say, well, we might not be able to do this, but what if we can do this? And they will try to help you. 
But if you come up and tell them you're going to blow them up, they are less in shit. They are less inclined. They're probably not even going to give you one of those those meal voucher things. And that's what I've never understood. Like I've worked a lot of years in customer service, and I don't know how people have not learned mm-hmm. that you get so much further by just being nice than you ever will by screaming at anybody or making an ass of yourself. All right. Well, moving along. There are many vehicles we have documented on this show that are inadequate for a high-speed chase. Usually they're construction. I think this is the first ever time someone has attempted to run from Mr. Police in a Google Street View car. Oh, Yep. Google Street View driver crashes after a 100 mile per hour chase. A <clears throat> man driving what appeared to be a Google Street View car got into a high speed chase with police in Western Indiana before driving through a yard into a creek, or as they say in my back of the woods, a creek. Uh, Indiana Middletown Police Department reported the crash in Monday's news release. Hosting photos of the vehicle emblazoned with Google Street View and adorned with a large upright camera. Google spokesperson said the Mountain View based tech giant relies on contractors to drive and collect imagery from Google Speed Street View. Um, at 5 p.m. local time, an officer noticed a car zipping past other drivers near a high school, determined the vehicle was speeding at 100 miles per hour. Officer caught up the car, but the driver continued to speed for several miles. So the driver slowed down. He drove through a red light. When the driver turned to avoid a closed bridge, he lost control, drove through the yard and into the creek where it became stuck. Police department used a driver's Florida driver's license to identify the driver. Of course. Stated he worked for Google and was scared to stop. Wow. Literally the no, you're gonna yell at me. <laughs> This is like I thought my bosses were were tough, bro. Here's the thing: Google already knew. It's fucking Google, man. You think that car didn't have like all the tracking in it? Google knew before what pops did. What's What's busted my brain is you were breaking the law in a car that is made mostly of camera. Yeah. You are just, you are, you are, you are making the evidence yourself. Google is our god now. <laughs> Google knows everything. Actually, Google doesn't know shit anymore. Used to know everything. Now the AI shit has made it stupid. You tried to search for anything on Google lately? You get like yards of these AI websites that are full of gibberish. The only way you can get anything decent out of Google is you have to type whatever you're trying to search for and then add Reddit after it. And you will actually find what you're trying to find. I'm not I'm not kidding. That's how it that's at this that's a sad state of affairs. Because AI. And you're like, no, no, please just send me to Reddit. They have these AI systems generating uh search word keyword uh optimization. They just pump out the websites. And it, they could make article that says any kind of bullshit that they're just gibberish from the AI machine. And it, it just completely fills the search results. So we're making our God stupid. Yes. And it gets worse when the AI starts training itself on other AI gibberish. The AI gets dumber. So there's there's two books that I read recently by Chuck Wendig, right? There's a little tangent. I'll, I'll try not to make it too long. The first one, he completely accidentally put out in 2020, and it was about a global pandemic. Like, clearly he'd been working on it for years ahead of time, but it came out in 2020, and I remember him being on Twitter like, guys, literally I could not have planned this. <laughs> and then... 
he wrote the sequel, which I read at chemo every week. Yeah. Cause it was like mystic. It got me all the way through chemo that wound up being about AI. And he was like, again, you guys, like I, I could not have planned this. I'm not like, I, I'm not sorry. Like asking, sh- start asking him for lottery numbers. Is all I'm saying. Yeah, but that kind of with the book, like the AI, which had kind of become God. Minor spoilers, but this is not an uncommon story. Like started developing emotions and couldn't understand the input and what didn't say. Well, it, it it's similar to that, except now it, it it just it's listening to each other and they're dumb. One of the programs, Chat GPT, can't do math anymore. It's it's its accuracy on math has gone from something like eighty nine percent to seven percent. I'm not exaggerating. That's not great. Right. It can't. It used to be able to tell you the the math problem and show its work. Now, if you ask ask it to show its work, it will say no. All right, well, what did we learn this week? We learned that maybe don't try to run from the cops in a surveillance vehicle. I like, yeah, run from Google. No, yeah, they, they, they will find you somehow. They, they, it's, they will find you. They, they will find you. Um, so we've also learned this week. I have, get up. Uh, maybe if you want to get help, rescheduling your flight don't threaten to blow the place up that kind of tends to draw things to a halt yeah we've learned maybe don't go looking for weed when you're really fucked up and only wearing a beanie yes. maybe put some shorts on before looking for weed today to paraphrase janine garofalo we've learned that um home depot Gives way too much deference to contractors. They might have to start ah, rethinking that one. We have learned if it if it if it looks like a dick, and it flies like a dick, it's probably a dick. And it was probably on purpose. Does, does it, I think you can just safely speculate. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's it's a baseball bat and two baseballs. Is it a sausage? It's, it's almost never an accidental dick. There is rarely there. And finally, we've learned when you're flying, who knows what will happen because maybe a bear. There could, however, be an accidental bear. It could just maybe you're whatever flight. Accidental you're dick? Unlikely. Accidental bear? Maybe. Life is weird. 